You know, that was really rude. I'm just standing here meditating, waiting for Luigi's Mansion 3, and you hit me with... Ah! It's here! It's here! It's here! It's here! It's here! It's here! Now that's worth the risk of concussion via thrown object. Oh well, my god, it's time! Read the username how you like. My original gig was cleansing Green Mario's big fat dusty house of rats and wraiths. Already done it a million and a half times. Once more, in Switchtastic Splendor. Couldn't hurt. As with any brand new release I dig into right out the gate, I will be talking story spoilers. If you didn't already guess that, hi, nice to meet you. It's just what I do. I'll leave the rest to you. My green capped childhood relic and favorite GameCube game ever is now the master of its own trilogy. Does Luigi's Mansion follow the wake of most video game trilogies, where third's a king that rules with love? Or is this the blank space I was staring into all along? Well, fellow fellas and lady fellas, let's video. Okay, so going into this completely blind, I had no grasp on what the story was gonna offer. Any Mario game that's not an RPG is allergic to narrative. God forbid it stepped too close without its inhaler, but this is a Luigi game. And poignantly so, it looks just like a typical plumber fairy tale, albeit with its own stylish quirks. We open up to Mario, Peach, Luigi, and a trio of toads bussing like a boss down a quiet road. Aww, Luigi adopted Polterpup? Better not jack my stuff this time or I'm reaching for the Polter newspaper roll. No, that's a good boy. They're out for vacation, meaning we're either sunshining or dream teaming up in here. Oh god, never mind. We see the eyeing. Could you kill me and make me the first boss ghost then? Actually, no. High joke potential aside, we are indeed sunshining. The gang pull up to this bomb hotel. 15 stories, luxury even Amazon can't afford. Free stay. Okay, what's the catch? <coughs> Nightmares, got it. Holy, 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 who picked out your mask? The Purge? Oh, and they float? They all float. Except this totally not suspicious Morticia cosplayer. She purples. Pro tip, Luigi. All purple people ever are evil masterminds. Thanos, this guy, Barney. But okay. One bed with a view. Miss normal, not ghost, not evil purple lady. Anyone else feel like we're watching that one episode of the Super Mario Super Show? You're welcome. Night night. Night night. Good night. It's broad daylight out here, but good night. After napping after his nap, Luigi wakes up at night. Everyone's gone. Jeez, Mario's a slop. King Boo. And that's it. Yeah, you surprised? Super fans of the Mansion series, like me, might end up disappointed after hearing this. I mean, come on, raise the stakes. Go deeper. Take the story to the next level. <laughs> But no, it's as minimal as its predecessors. And that's okay, honestly. If you don't tell a story in cutscenes, at least tell one in gameplay. And <laughs> we'll get to that. But to finish the premise, Luigi escapes from King Boo through the laundry chute and ends up in the basement, where Polterpup inches him towards the brand new Poltergust G100 in a car. Okay? Shortly after, he discovers that Helen Gravely, you know, the purple lady, is a huge fangirl of King Boo and arranged this trap to impress Ghosty Senpai, going the extra mile by also inviting and capturing Professor E. Gad after releasing his ghost collection. Ub. Obsessed. It's just like old times. Luigi ghost busts under Egad's guidance and travels through the gigantic hotel to conquer the spirits and rescue his gang. Again, real simple story. And with what we have coming, that's just about ideal for this series. Know what else is ideal? And I think it's something everyone agrees on. The presentation. Luigi's Mansion 3 is appropriately the best looking of its brethren by far. And is one of the best looking games in the entire franchise, if you ask me. As far as technology is concerned, of course, it's not even half a month old. But I won't let that take away from next level's 
excellent sense of aesthetic, something technology can't command. Never has darkened interior design looked so stylized. The lighting is superb. Bloom is expertly tailored to the spooky highs we demand. And the models pass the white glove test with soaring colors, they're so clean. The quirky art style carried over from Dark Moon melds intensely well with this new switch-tastic fidelity, bringing the evolution of this trilogy's art to a very pleasing peak. It all pops like kettle corn. Also, every animator with any hand in the cutscenes deserves a gold diamond and a gift basket. These are amazing, rich with buttery animation, cinematic framing, and Pixar grade body language. If there is ever a new 3D cartoon series about anything remotely Mario related greenlit, hire this team. They are masters. And save for Dream Team, this is the greatest Luigi performance yet. His buffoonish elegance dominates every scene. The wholesomeness of his cute, quirky reactions has reached peak purity. You just want to hug him the entire game. Though I do admit, sometimes his inflections are a little strange. Charles Martinet puts out a bit of a meow sound, like he's playing a middle-aged cat. It's funny at least, even if it sticks out like an unplucked nose hair. Talking about Luigi himself segues into one of the game's signature strengths. It's an incredibly charming piece of work. And impressively, it's not derivative of the original's charm. Rather, it's very respectful and shining key aspects in a new light. A great example are the boss ghosts. To answer the scorching question, every fan of the first came in asking, are the portrait ghosts back? Actually, yes and no. Let me explain. They are identical in regards to, well, identity. Each with their own name and personality, visually or otherwise. And Egad even states that they were a batch in his collection released by Helen Gravely. So yes, they technically are. But these don't pack their own bios or seem to fit as a group. It's a hodgepodge of oddballs. Like I said, it's a lot like the original's collection in concept and quality, but 3's way of showing them off rides on the heels of the gameplay instead of background. It's pretty clever that way. All of them handsomely tie into the theme of their respective hotel floor, and the whole game's devoted to taking them down to loot their stolen elevator button to reach King Boo on the roof. A few of my favorites include Dr. Potter and his green glowing thumb, Captain Fishhook, the only ghost shark I can watch without craving Drano smoothies, and frickin' Morty, my man! Let's edit lunch, then do it! Lots of cute touches all throughout, with Polterpup's adorable tutorial, and everything with the toads. Riding piggyback on ladders like Yoda, cheering like a happy child after getting launched into a brick wall, and you can even high five the little dude. Oh, that's my little buddy. It's funny too. From Egad roasting the virtual boy, Luigi tapping and snapping to the DJ's jam, to Egad's cancer curing run animation. <laughs> I can't. There's so much to love behind the cast and their energy, even if you can't get into the gameplay. However you manage that. Okay, Bean Boy. It's video game, not video story and charm. Get to playing. Oh! Happily, the second it was announced, I was dying to know exactly how Luigi's Mansion 3 played. Would it be Dark Moon only better? Or explorer and completionist friendly like the original? I didn't expect it to be both. Hear it right and hear it good from a man whose replays of the first outnumbers Ouija's A-rank bank digits. The third step taken is a prideful culmination of both right behind it. Here's the combat in a nutshell. <laughs> It's so fun! Simple and sweet. Flash them as usual, yank them back to drain their health, and slam them to smithereens! You can even combo other ghosts with it and chain captures together. That alone keeps battles super fun, but well-paced, and never repetitive. 
And that's not even the best part. Taking Dark Moon's brilliant innovations wrought by the Strobulb and Dark Light and putting them to proficient use in a huge interconnected hub reminiscent of the first. That's the best part. Best of both worlds is a good tagline to ride. Every good idea developed on the 3DS entry carries over to the Switch masterfully, combined with new additions like the burst and suction shot, aka the sneeze and back throw, and you have a Luigi unprecedented in versatility. Oh wait, Gooigi exists. Now it's unprecedented. In short, Luigi can jump with an AoE air blast, suck, blow, flashbang, yeet, uncover invisible objects, and tag team with a gelatinous clone for twice the yeet, divide and conquer puzzles, phasing through fences and pipes, and co-op. Wow! The depth of your arsenal is a key factor in why exploration and combat is so fun. Once you unlock Guiji after defeating Cambria, the second boss, there is nothing you can't solve. The versatility and quick access to it turns you into a cash harvesting fiend, aka Juiji if you're feeling Luigi, constantly combing over every inch of every floor in your effort to buy Canada. <laughs> I must have shiny, shiny! And you know what helps? I'm sure you noticed the instant you got the poltergust, you suck so much, so much suck! Everything, and I mean everything, is mushy kibble for your demon vacuum. Paper, books, towels, curtains, bedsheets, mice, spiders, drywall, couch cushions, whole fruits, lit candles, wrenches, skulls, swords, the bow of a boat, and ghosts. No way. It's so stupid. So funny. It's hard to walk into a room filled with unsucked things and not Kirby that stuff. Oh my god. I found him. I found him! The remaining smash invites! Finally I can see who's next! <laughs> you suck! <laughs> File it under oddly satisfying. I love it. Not that the level design needed more love. If I must compare the Haunted Hotel of Ouija to the original, and I must, it's an all-time favorite and the reason this game exists, this, this right here, Disneyland. THE Disneyland. Whereas the OG mansion is home sweet home. We're on an end game vacation, y'all. All the floors in this newest mansion are impressive set pieces to behold. Blending fun architecture of all kinds. Shopping mall, ritzy seafood shanty, renaissance fair, a movie set, the boys locker room, among other awesome things like a puzzling sewer line and a great pyramid with so much sand that I must suck up. Oh, why do I feel so good. The smiles are at a high on every floor, taking these nifty levels and continuing the quality puzzles in ways that consistently impress is tops. Some of these are super wild, and the moments of realization upon clicking it all together are priceless. Take Paranormal Productions as an example. Four rooms hosting various film sets linked to TV portals in a goal to retrieve Morty's prized megaphone stuck in a spider web that needs to be burned. Work the camera as Luigi to transform the set into a complete scene with the special effects added in, allowing Gooigi to act in the scene. Throw a bucket down a spooky well, a fugly demon fills it with water for you, take it to the medieval set to water the vine to climb up and get a torch, light the torch on that burning building set, then take it to the spooky attic set and burn the web to get the megaphone. That was brilliant. And frankly, the whole game's like that. Just a ton of fun levels with thoughtful, creative puzzles, tons of clever detail with perfect length, and boss battles at the end. Oh, Lord! You thought that was it, huh? Nah, son, that's the warm-up! 
If there's anything Luigi's Mansion 3 utterly dominates, it's the boss battles. Most of them super ambitious for this series, packed with the game's finest spectacles, and are violently creative. From a colossal, possessed T-Rex skeleton manned by Ugg, Captain Fishhook's monster house floor face and capsizing ship, to Serpsy's amazing sand conjuring, to my favorite moment in the entire game, the Godzilla homage in Paranormal Productions. I was shivering from hype here. Low-key, one of my favorite video game moments of this entire decade. Decade. And seeing the battle in black and white after Morty edited it and how I didn't have to capture him? God, I'll buy the game again for that. It's epic. Quick mention of the multiplayer. While I can't speak for the scare scrape or a scream park on account of not playing either, and honestly too distracted by the campaign to really try it, though the Bulasis inclusion does make me smile, I can speak for the co-op. On top of being a neat new feature in single player, Gooigi paves the way for a fantastic co-op experience. Two Luigis for the price of one is a lucrative steal given how priceless our green boy is to begin with. There are no strings here. It's literally just another Luigi to double the efficiency. And it's a surreal joy to see. Only remote issue is that the camera takes after new Super Mario Bros and can only focus on the real Luigi. It's fine if the guy behind the wheel isn't a chunky boner, but you know, discretion advised. Okay, happy. Any nitpicks? Come on, this game can't be perfect. Find something wrong! Fine. If that's how it's gonna be. I have ran into some technical oddities. Some of the boundaries in the T-Rex skeleton fight skipped hitbox day, leading to this bra moment. Eh, always good to respect someone's bubble. Second, I am a bit disappointed by the lack of ties to the first game. Especially because 3 clearly understands what made it so great. Bios on the boss ghosts would have been awesome. And I don't get why they didn't give any callbacks to the OG portrait ghosts. Like, doesn't Johnny Deep End look like he'd be buddy-buddy with Biff Atlas? Maybe Madame Claravoya could have been the collective idol of the Magician Sisters? And why wasn't this guy Chef Parmesan? I mean... Come on! As fun as collecting all that money is, you can't really do anything with all of it. Sure, there's a shop, but it only sells extra lives and shortcuts to find gems or booze, none of which are that useful. It's more fun to find those things yourself anyway. The booze themselves feel pretty slapped on, since you can go the whole game without ever even finding one. Pretty weird. There isn't much interaction between Luigi and the other characters, apart from Egad. Mario and Peach have less than two minutes of screen time, and save for the time spent fighting them, Helen Gravely and King Boo have comparable screen time. It's a shame because, like I said, the cutscenes are amazing, and even a little more could have gone a long way. And lastly, the mice and polter kitty. Them stealing your elevator buttons and running away to different floors in Polter Kitty's case is not fun at all. Granted, it's not as frequent or frustrating as Polter Pup in Dark Moon, but still, I didn't need a second round of ghost cat and mouse wasting my time, no matter how cool the kitty is. It sucks, and only I'm allowed to suck. If you couldn't tell by now, I love Luigi's Mansion 3. And even though I expected to, I could have never predicted it being this much. Next Level has proven themselves as yet another unflinching titan in the Nintendo household with this game alone. It is a phenomenal time. Given the same inspiring passion and affection Kono, Tezuka, and Miyamoto first gave to its now legendary grandfather those 18 years ago. I don't need to repeat this, it's just flat out excellent. And it's neither too short or too long, it's a great balance. For those new here, thanks for watching, I think you get it. But to my veteran followers, you must be wondering, is it better than the original? Well, yes, it technically is, that's obvious enough. But do I like it more? Hmm, like I said. It's Disneyland. Would make a ton of sense to just want to stay there forever. It has everything, and since it sweats money, budget will never force you to leave. But there's no place like home, and that's what the original is to me. Think that's a conclusive answer. But that's okay. Three's different. 
good different, and we all need a vacation every now and then. This is being Fawful's Minion, saying remember to keep calm and have fury. Catch you next time. Hey, thanks for sticking around. Hope my first freestyle review rubbed the right way. And now, a salute to the high tier patrons Shade2800, Jordan Osceola, Tubazo 1989, Diamond Ice, Skellington 977, Mathtron 5000, Goldsbro TSG, Thomas Drury, Cole the Wren's Castle, Jerway, Sensei Spyro, Lucario Smash 246, God Falking Damn It, Alfredo Jones, Green Moonlight, Sefi 90, Nightmare Steel, Zero Z, Jake Arnstom, Morgan Arvite, Squeegee Luigi, Baltazar Rodriguez, John the Pink, Renaku, Lord of Shadow, Cortamanch 437, Azazel the Undying, Cody Thomas, Peter Shepard, Solitaire Seamus, Christopher, GTY 200, Belkin, Michael Boyd, Steve, Masao, Exeox, Put 9 Volt in Smash Bros, please, Minty Coffee, Arctic Kaiju, Connor Doyle, Gaming Griffin, Burn 100B, Patrick Sandin, Roberto Del Fuego, Smash Mario Pro 2000, Grandmaster Augustus, and Spark of Dusk 777. May we meet again!